macro cell towers like this one behind me impressively serve a wide variety of locations, but they can only do so much. Large shopping centres, busy inner city centres and other ultra dense urban environments often need additional solutions in order to deliver a pleasing mobile experience. In this video, I will specifically be talking about small cells and in-building solutions, which the UK saw major developments in during 2024, delivering a much improved experience to a huge array of different customers. I will start off talking about small cell developments, an area in which we saw substantial progress in the case of Virgin Media O2, who started off the year 2024 with already a substantial small cell footprint, especially in London, extended not only the footprint of their small cell grid, deploying in new locations, including outside of London, but they also started to work on deploying more capacity to their small cell grid as well. I assessed Virgin Media O2's new small cell deployment in both Reading and Birmingham. Now, both of these use Ericsson as their radio access network vendor, and both have deployments using 1800 MHz 4G. However, in Birmingham, very interestingly, I was able to test out one of the small cells that has N78. And not only N78 NSA, it even supported N78 standalone SA 5G as well, with very nice performance. Interestingly, the Birmingham SA small cell also had 44R 1800 MHz 4G with very nice performance too. The rest of the Birmingham and Reading Ericsson small cells that I tested out were 2T 2R 1800 MHz 4G at the time of assessment. However, that may well change in 2025. This is because we have seen Virgin Media O2 rapidly deploy additional capacity to small cell locations in London, which previously had 1800 MHz 4G and have then been gaining 2600 MHz TDD at scale. Now this is through the addition of a co-sited additional small cell unit there was even some NR2600 MHz TDD spotted by David Wheatley in central London. Now, Virgin Media O2 was not the only provider we saw deploying 5G onto small cells in 2024. BT's EE also did it on a cluster near Croydon in south of London with the small cells having 1800 MHz 4G and then N78 5G as well, once again to very nice results. Aside from these Ericsson architecture small cell deployments, BT's EE also expanded their Nokia 4G small cell deployment with them appearing in all manner of locations across the UK in quite surprising numbers. Operator 3 also impressed with their small cell progress in 2024, not only installing a large quantity of small cells, but highly performant ones as well, thanks to a whopping 80 megahertz of N78 deployed on many of them, as well as multi-carrier 4G. And I'm sure we'll see these spread to numerous further places 
during 2025, especially if the pace of rollout continues as it has done previously. Last but not least then, Vodafone. And the deployment that I'm going to cover is their rural use of small cells to supplement macro coverage. Vodafone deploy 10 megahertz paired of 4G on 2100 megahertz to these Mavenir small cells to provide additional 4G coverage to locations that otherwise would be quite challenging to serve from the macro grid in the area. And these have been spotted primarily in locations that previously had the 3G Rural Open Shore signals or ROS cells that as part of the 3G switch off had to be removed and replaced. All in all then, in 2024, we saw excellent work in small cells from the UK's mobile network operators, as well as vendors and partners such as Nokia, Ericsson and antennas from Alpha Wireless. However, while outdoor small cells can and do improve the coverage and network performance in many buildings, there are very large, densely populated or complicated structures that require an in-building solution or IBS to appropriately deliver customer experience and network throughput and consistency internally. I will start off talking about Stansted Airport, a critical terminus delivering domestic and international flights located close to London and serving millions of passengers per year and clearly providing mobile performance to those passengers is really quite a challenge and one which required a sophisticated solution. The wireless infrastructure group solution at Stansted Airport has impressive spectral deployment across the operators that utilize it, with Virgin Media 02 having 4G on bands 1, 3, 8, 20 and dual band 40 carriers. BTEE, meanwhile, supporting five carrier aggregation in the downlink across bands 1, 3 and 7, so dual downlink band 3 carriers and dual downlink band 7 carriers. And Vodafone also having bands 1, 7, 8 and 20. With frankly all of these aforementioned operators delivering very nice throughput there. And it wasn't just Stansted Airport the wireless infrastructure group solution flourished. Manchester Airport is another key urban airport delivering domestic and international flights. And its wireless infrastructure group solution also went live with multiple operators in 2024 as well. Once again, with very nice performance. Outside of airports, the Trafford Centre, an enormous retail space in Manchester, also gained a notable upgrade to its in-building performance through wireless infrastructure group adding 5G capability for operator Vodafone in the area of the Trafford Centre called the Orient, which is described as Europe's largest food court. Now this 5G deployment brings the throughput well above the 100 megabit per second mark in the downlink direction, even when I visited at a time shortly before Christmas when the center was extremely busy including around the food court area that the 5g upgrade is focused on thanks for watching this video about small cell and in-building solution development during 2024 which clearly lay significant groundwork for 2025 in the next and final part of the video series focusing on 2024 developments, 
I will talk about some spectrum changes, some other call cool deployments, and as well some regulatory matters that will play a part into 2025. I hope to see you there.